Hey guys, Tyler Erzberger here with ESPN Esports. Today I am joined with Blabber of Cloud9. A pretty rocky weekend, up and down, especially for a team that has had a pretty breezy 2020 in terms of results. One and one. You got the win today versus FlyQuest, but obviously you had lost two games beforehand. One of the first times in your LCS career where you've actually lost back to back games. What's the feeling like when you you're not used to losing the LCS. So how was it, you know, coming off two back-to-back -back losses like that? Um, well, the first loss to 100 felt pretty bad, but I think the loss yesterday didn't feel as bad. I think right now we know, like, we know we're still really good. We just don't really know the meta very well right now. And I think we aren't, I mean, we're also trying things out, but it's also like we don't really know what we want priority wise and we don't we don't really understand what's that great right now, i think looking at everything that's gone on from in the summer obviously you won spring you should have won to msi msi was supposed to be in los angeles it got canceled you weren't able to play any you know international games you know korea and china had the mid-season cup but na you guys really were left out in the cold how important do you feel missing MSI was? Do you feel like that was something that you guys really needed to kind of take your game to the next level? Um, yeah, I mean, I personally think missing MSI was uh, pretty bad for us. Not being able to play against teams internationally. Um, like, scrims obviously weren't useful for us last split. Um, honestly, this split, even though, like, we haven't been doing too well on stage, our scrims also have still been the same as always. Um we, our games have been sloppier, but I think uh, missing out on MSI was really a really big hit for us, uh, improvement-wise. Has North America got any better in the summer? Obviously, you guys aren't as dominant as you were in the spring, but yet, as you said, you've been, you guys have been playing a bit sloppier. Do you think that's a tribute to, you know, TL, 100 Thieves, EG might be becoming better, or do you think it's more so you guys just playing down to your opponent? Um... I mean, we play TL next week, but I think we're going to try to figure out the meta more this week and, I guess, tone down our play. Um, I think I think we'll beat TL pretty easily, honestly. They can't they can't play versus us in scrims at all, so uh, I think we'll be fine. It's just, even though we are winning all our practice games this week, even our wins were, like, very bad wins in a way. Um, it kind of looked like our stage games, just like really sloppy cows mistakes, taking bad fights, um, stuff like that, yeah. So I think it's something we're going to focus on going into next week. One of the big storylines right now in North America is kind of the revolutionizing of the homegrown player. Obviously, you won North America MVP. Your teammate Vulcan has kind of risen up the rankings to be one of, if not the best, uh, North American support. Licorice is always... In the top lane, we have Insanity, who's been doing extremely well on Immortals, Tactical in the bot lane for Team Liquid. It seems like more homegrown talent is giving chances with the better teams in the league, and they're you know, capitalizing on it. They're actually doing well. Uh, do you feel like there's maybe a shift in teams looking to grow more homegrown talent than just importing for import's sake? Um I don't think so. Uh, I think teams will try to get more homegrown talent, but I mean, to be honest, if you don't have two imports, you're probably not going to be winning, uh, unless your imports are native, like Jensen and Bjergsen, for example. Um, I think it's just really hard to honestly find five NA players that are like top of their level for a team. Um, also, NA isn't the strongest region, right? So if you're importing, I'm assuming you're picking up a stronger player, right? What academy talent or amateur talent out there do you think, if given the chance, could be the next Blabber, the next Tactical, the next Vulcan? Is there a player out there in academy or even amateur scenes below academy that you feel like, you know, playing him against them solo queue or in practice, have the talent to be that next big homegrown star? Um, not really. I mean, I don't really pay attention to amateur or academy that much. And to be honest, there's not any solo queue players that I'm that I play against that I'm like, wow, they're like really good, you know. Um, 
So for me, I don't really see that much. Um, I think they can all become like good players, right? Um, in the else, like maybe there are like a lot of players that can become good or like sustainable. But I mean, my goal is always to win, and even if you're the best in NA, that does not make you anywhere near the best in the world. So <laughs> if you can't even be the best in NA, I don't see what hope you have doing well internationally. Talking about international play, ESPN recently reported that the current discussions of Worlds 2020 seems to be pointed towards a bubble-like format in Shanghai where all the world teams would travel to Shanghai or to a hub city, basically quarantine there for a few weeks and then kind of have the entire tournament in a singular section, just one city, one area, one hotel. Obviously, C9 is on the road to going to the World Championships once again. How would you feel like if you were in this bubble format? Would you be bothered at all? Do you have any hesitations? Or would it just be same old, same old, right? Where you're just going to be indoors for three months straight practicing? I mean, I wouldn't be bothered by it. <laughs> Obviously, it sucks that you can't play on a stage, right? And fans can't really see you. Um, and you can't see the fans. But, um, I mean, we've been doing it now for a while. And, I mean, I'd rather play at Worlds than not have a Worlds happen at all, regardless of, like, what happens. Um, so for me, as long as Worlds happens, it I don't really care what happens. Do you think it could be a, a positive for C9? It's very much like a free boot camp, where if everyone's in the same hotel or the same section, it seems like you guys would get a lot more practice in with the Asian teams more so than usual, than a usual boot camp, and have more time actually playing before Worlds starts. Do you think that could help you guys with the lack of MSI? Um, I don't think it will honestly change our practice that much. I think us doing really well this year might get us better scrim partners in general, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I don't know how strong we are, right? Compared to internationally, right now we're not even playing well. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, we've never really had a problem getting scrims in the past, anyways, because um, we'd always boot camp in Korea or I mean, in Korea before in the last two worlds. Before the actually, we boot camp in Europe last year, but. We'd always boot camp anyways, and we'd have scrim partners before World started anyways with mm -hmm. international teams. Um, so for us, like practice has isn't really an issue, I'd say. But maybe if everyone's together, we can get better scrims. But um, sometimes if you get <laughs> too hard, you don't really <laughs> learn that much. <laughs> Is there a hierarchy to World scrims? Is it a thing where you know, certain teams will only face certain talent or you have to prove yourself before they'll even scrim you? Is there, like, a hierarchy of, like, wildcard teams will never in a million years get to scrim against, you know, a, a T1 or an RNG, for example? I have no clue about that specifically, like, uh, the T1 stuff, because, no. I mean, for us personally, it's usually, we haven't been, like, great, right, the last two years, mm -hmm. but, like, they'll give us, like, the top teams like SKT or something or like FPX will give us like, you know, one or maybe two scrims. And if we play really poorly, then they never <laughs> scrim us again, you know? Um, I mean, obviously there's going to be a hierarchy. Uh, usually like the Asian teams scrim each other because they're, they're the best, you know? And then G2 had, uh, I mean, Europe had G2 last year who were probably scrimming among them. Um, but we had decent scrims last year at Worlds. Uh, we scrimmed like FPX, Dam1, SKT, uh, G2, wait, did we scream? No, we didn't scream G2, they're in a group. Um, Fnatic, uh, yeah, I mean, we pretty much got to scream all the top teams, so. Speaking of damn well, I just want a little a caveat here. Uh, there's, I mean, I I mean, I was there in Europe last year. Uh, the rumors of scrim damn one, of basically scrimmage damn one being like the greatest team of all time, they smashed G2 in like 98% of the scrims they played in. Can you confirm? Or deny that Scrim Damwon is as good as advertised. Um, we act we actually scrim Damwon a lot. So mm -hmm. when before the play-in stage started, they were like untouchable for us. <laughs> like there's nothing we could do. But once they started playing on stage, they like I don't know. They started playing a lot worse. And mm -hmm. towards the end of Worlds, they were losing to us in scrims, mm -hmm. um, which was very surprising as we <laughs> could not play from the beginning. I mean, when it first started. Showmaker and Nugri were just unbeatable. Mm -hmm. uh, same with Canyon. But the three of them topside, we just couldn't contest at all. But as Worlds went on, Nugri started just inting in scrims. <laughs> uh, Showmaker wasn't that impressive. Um, I mean, Canyon was still playing really well, but obviously when your laners aren't doing that well, uh, it's hard as a jungler. So 
they weren't as good towards the end towards like the middle or end of worlds as um was like i guess talked about final question before i let you go obviously you would you see yourself at the world championships in shanghai in a few months for north america to have its best performance at worlds the three teams that should go from na are cloud nine and who else what other two teams would you pick to say would have the best chance of representing north america well at the 2020 world championships uh i think right now tl and tsm could probably could probably be them um honestly i'm not really sure though uh I think anyone can go uh, to the to Worlds. I really don't know the power rankings of NA right now, so <laughs> uh, I think it's anyone's game. Is there at least some hope? Is there some hope for the North American fans, Blabber? Give us a little bit of hope that NA can do something at Worlds this year. I don't think any of the other teams, if it's not us, can do anything at Worlds. So uh, I think we play pretty bad in scrims, and we still win all of them. Uh, so... No. I don't have that much hope. I don't even know how good we are right now. So I think it'll be rough, but I think we can improve. So, <laughs> well, that's a lot of optimism from Blabber, <laughs> uh, the MVP of North American LCS, as we head into the end of the season. Thank you, Blabber. A great interview as always. And if you want more news and highlights, check us out at ESPN.com slash esports. Thank you.